Hey guys, today I want to take a look at this Sharp 58 inch TV with a faulty backlight. And we're going to get this cover off and start doing a little bit of testing on it. Here I'm just showing you that this screw is a little bit different. You can set it aside. All the rest of these screws will be the same and the cover will pop right off. As we get the cover off, the next thing we're going to do is we want to unhook the wires from the speaker assembly. It just lift up off of these little rubber bumpers and we'll set it aside. Make sure this wire is loose so we can take our connectors off of our LCD. Also, these little ground strips. We'll take those loose from the connector board. And you can take these loose on either spot. I'm taking it loose at the T-Con board. That way, I'll be able to flip it around and just tape it back to the LCD before I remove it. We also want to remove our power button and also the screws on the bottom side of the bezel so we can lift the bezel off. And by the way, on the troubleshooting for this TV, it's just like the 47 inch Vizio I did earlier in a video. I just took a flashlight and I shined it across the LCD and I could see the image. It had like a um, the Hulu image as well as the sharp image on it. So I knew at that point that the backlight was faulty and we had a video image on the display itself. So after we carefully tape up both our connectors for our LCD. We can set it aside, and then we can take our spacers from top, bottom, left, and right. And I did mark mine accordingly so I can put them back with ease. And next, we can remove our diffusing layer, our diffusers, our filter layer. And then we remove these little standoff clips. And now the reflector piece, this is one of the very few that I've seen like this, but sticky back tape was all over this piece. As you can see how wrinkled up it is here as I show this, I had already had to pull it up and make sure that it would come up without ripping really bad. So be careful as you lift up this reflector on this one. Since it is adhered with tape, as most just lay in place and the clips hold it. So okay guys, a little bit of troubleshooting with this Sharp TV. We see these small wires coming from the power supply board on the other side and we're coming up and the red wire is hitting this one and we're going in series, hitting the bottom and coming back through. And then the black one is going back out. So this is our 200 volts open circuit. I would expect it to be around 150 to 170, just guessing at this point with a current control. So I'm gonna put my camera on the tripod and we're gonna do some troubleshooting with this. We know that open circuit, we're around 200 volts. Plug it back up, we're getting about 170 volts, which is probably current limited. I'm gonna bring my two meters over and we'll look at uh, troubleshooting it just a little bit for the backlight. So a little bit of a weird angle here, I apologize, but just to get uh, both meters in the shot well, I hope. I have a meter with some finer leads uh, set to my 10 amp setting in case something um, does pull high current for a split second as I can use for a jumper and I have my voltage reading on this Fluke 87 here. I'm going to put the voltage reading over here like so and put the current like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I do have it powered on and the power button is pressed so with my, my voltage range on DC on my 87. Okay, the, the red wire coming up is hitting here and going through, coming all the way back to the black wire here. And we're at like 170, 180, but it's 150, 160 volts. It's, it's not real consistent because the, the load must be changing. As far as voltage across, we're getting um, very low, about 17 volts on that set. I imagine these are going to take 40 volts or so to fire, maybe 30 something, 16 volts, 22 volts, 21 volts, and this one is over 80 volts, so there's no reason why at 80 volts this strip here should not be firing, so since this is a current regulated board, I'm going to see, um, we'll see what we get on current here, and this is in amps by the way, but I'm going to jump across this series set here because one of these may be open oh there it goes so we have 560 milliamps so we have just a little over half an amp regulated and i don't have every single 
LED showing on the video. I know, but every LED is lit up. You probably think that's obvious since they're in series. That'd have to be. So it looks like it's just in this strip right here. So one thing unusual for this Sharp TV to me is how these right here are. The strips don't have sticky back tape. They actually have like silicone just hit in like six inch or so intervals. It's kind of crazy. Which I hadn't worked on a real new TV, so maybe this is actually how everything is going, you know? But one thing um, that's unusual also about these is I believe every one of these strips are the same. So all five have 10 LEDs and they all seem to be the same exact strip, which is kind of unusual. So all of these strips should be should be the same 10 LED strips, same connector, no, uh, no piece together, all one strip. So we're gonna just continue getting this off and we'll just take it on the bench and have a look at it. So the one thing I do like about these strips out of the Sharp TV is not only do we have our plus and minus shown here, We do have our little test points, L01, L02. I've had luck doing this with some Samsung TVs in the past where, hopefully you can see this on camera. Um, let me cut the bench light off here. Cut the bench light off so you can see this a little bit better. Just on diode check and from plus to L1, our LED lights up. L1 to L01 to L02. Hmm. Eight to nine. Oh, eight to nine. And we got a problem right here with nine and possibly ten because it doesn't light up, but it does show a diode junction. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove these two surface mount LEDs here in the nine and 10 location. I'm gonna to try to solder up some new ones on there and just see how this strip works. And I'll decide if I wanna actually replace the strips or just depend on how this works out, or I just wanna replace the SMD LEDs. So I think that's long enough on this video about the troubleshooting of the Sharp 58 inch. In the next video, we'll look at the repair of the LED strips. And you can decide if you'd rather repair them or just buy them from somewhere like Shop Jimmy or eBay and replace the strips. But on this TV, I'm gonna to decide to just replace the SMD LED chips since it's only two of them bad and the TV is only about two years old. So if you're interested in that, just go on to the next video where we show a little bit of bench testing and then the replacement of the, the surface mount LED chips. So I hope you found this video helpful today. If you did, please like, share, Subscribe and thanks for watching.